Hello, kia ora and nin hao. Uh, my name is Ben and today I'll be chatting about queer activism through the modern uh, Taiwanese music that we see today uh, out of Taiwan, which is of course, uh, a, it gets debated whether it's a country or uh, it's not a country uh, regarding its relationship with mainland China, but Taiwan regardless is still a major Mando pop hub, Mando pop being uh, Mandarin speaking mainstream pop music um, and it is a cultural heart indeed the thing is alongside uh, Taiwan being a major Mando pop hub it's also a major queer hub and so we see the intersectionality of this uh, in regards to modern Taiwanese music being so pro queer friendly and so for uh, the movements and the law reform and all that good stuff um, and Taiwan is a pioneer in Asia when it comes to queer rights. Uh, in 2019, uh, Taiwan was the first country in Asia to legalize same-sex marriage, uh, which was a landmark moment. Despite this though, and still to this day, uh, Taiwan's same-sex couples can currently only adopt their partner's biological kids, and they can only weed foreigners from nations that have pro-gay laws. So there's still a little bit of funk uh, when it comes to gay rights in Taiwan, but through music and the activism that comes with it, we see a lot of change. There are a whole bunch of fantastic names in regards to queer Taiwanese music, uh, whether they are queer or not. Uh, some of the major ones, Ame. Uh, Ame is the queen of Mando pop. She's also known as what Asian Beyonce to some, uh, but she has some fantastic queer anthems like Rainbow and Love is Everything. Uh, Jolin Sai, whole bunch of her music videos like Fantasy depict uh, gay marriage and did so in a pioneering way that was not seen before. Uh, and also the likes of Antonio Huang, uh, Mayday, Name We to name a few. And also Evangeline, uh, who's interesting because Evangeline's song Alt Unlimited Love uh, was interesting in that it had a different meaning when it was first made, but now has since taken up a queer tone in its message. Uh, and people have since attached themselves to the message of the song. Um, but what all of this means for the future of Taiwan, uh, a whole bunch of people could say, oh, well, Taiwan is attaching itself to uh, the West because, you know, such music and such queer rights are radical and to do with the West in that sense, um, which is true. I mean, Taiwan is indeed uh, presenting itself as a multicultural and I guess global hub, one that any person from across the world could go to. It's setting itself up as uh, a heart in the Sinophone world as well, because as I say, intersectionality is a whole bunch of different people from all walks of life can call Taiwan home. Uh, but I expect to see more Taiwanese music with an activist uh, background with political agendas. Uh, and I'm sure we can expect that in the future, especially as uh, Taiwan aims to have better queer rights uh, even further. Uh, in regards to, as I've already said, adoption and uh, yeah, marriage of foreigners and stuff like that. So yes, a whole bunch of stuff on the screen to take in. Uh, but the final part is that Taiwan is kind of under threat in regards to this, uh, because of course, mainland China uh, sees Taiwan as a threat in regards to its connections with the West, but also uh, the status of the home of Mando Pop might soon be gone uh, because there are other nations that are looking at Taiwan and seeing the success or maybe not success, depending on your, you know, affliction and uh, opinions on gay marriage. But in a statement, as it says in the red dot in the center of the screen, Taiwan continues to pioneer queer rights in Asia uh, and the impact and success of pro-queer Mando pop and Taiwanese music. It all shows the power of the arts to affect socio-political change. So yes, the references are there. I'm covering it right now. But anyways, I am Ben. I hope you've learned something about LGBTQ plus activism and modern Taiwanese music. Should I? Sure, I don't know. <laughs>